have you ever wondered if nuclear reactions could occur at room temperature? Imagine a world where we harness the power of the stars, not amidst the fury of a million degrees, but in the comfort of our own room. This is the concept of cold fusion, a stark contrast to the well-known and much hotter cousin, hot fusion, which powers the stars and hydrogen bombs. A truly revolutionary idea, isn't it? So let us embark on a journey that traces the history of cold fusion. The year was 1989 and two electrochemists, Martin Fleischmann and Stanley Pons, made a startling announcement. They claimed to have discovered what seemed like the holy grail of energy production, a phenomenon they called cold fusion. Their experiment involved the electrolysis of heavy water, a form of water that contains a larger than normal amount of the hydrogen isotope deuterium. This was not new. What was new, however, was their assertion that this process, when conducted on the surface of a palladium electrode, produced an anomalous amount of heat, far more than could be explained by any known chemical process. But that wasn't all. Fleischmann and Ponce also reported detecting small amounts of nuclear reaction byproducts, including neutrons and tritium. This was a shocking claim. Could it really be possible that these two scientists had stumbled upon a nuclear process that could occur at or near room temperature, in stark contrast to the hot fusion that we know takes place within stars and in hydrogen bombs? Their announcement was met with a flurry of media attention. The implications were staggering. If their claims were true, it could mean an abundant, cheap source of energy, a solution to our ever-growing energy needs. The world was abuzz with excitement and anticipation, yet the scientific community remained cautious. The process of cold fusion, if it indeed existed, defied our current understanding of nuclear physics. There was no accepted theoretical model that could explain how such a process could occur. Moreover, the details of the Fleischmann-Pons experiment were sketchy at best. Many scientists tried to replicate their results, but with few details available, this proved to be a challenging task. But, as the scientific community would soon find out, replicating their results would not be as straightforward. The road ahead was fraught with obstacles, and the initial euphoria surrounding the discovery of cold fusion would soon give way to skepticism and controversy. The story of cold fusion was only just beginning. As the news spread, scientists worldwide attempted to replicate the experiment. The stage was set for a revolution in the world of energy. Laboratories across the globe were abuzz with excitement and curiosity, all seeking to reproduce the groundbreaking results reported by Fleischmann and Pons. However, as they delved deeper into the experiment, the initial enthusiasm began to wane. One by one, researchers started to report failed replications. Despite their best efforts, they were unable to reproduce the anomalous heat reported in the original experiment. Furthermore, a significant number of those who had initially reported positive replications began to withdraw their claims. Doubts began to surface about the validity of the original findings. As the scientific community scrutinized the original experiment further, they began to uncover a series of flaws and sources of experimental error. The rigorous application of the scientific method started to reveal cracks in the foundation of the cold fusion claim. The design of the experiment, the execution, and even the analysis of the results were all called into question. The final blow came with a startling revelation. The conclusion was drawn that Fleischmann and Pons had not actually detected nuclear reaction byproducts as they had claimed. Instead, what they had observed were likely the result of more mundane chemical reactions, not the revolutionary nuclear process they had proposed. This revelation triggered a significant shift in the scientific community's perception of cold fusion. What was once viewed as a potential game-changer in the energy sector was now being seen as a scientific misstep. The excitement and optimism that had initially surrounded the concept of cold fusion began to evaporate, replaced by skepticism and disillusionment. By the end of 1989, cold fusion was largely considered a dead end. The promise of an abundant, cheap energy source had faded, and the scientific world moved on, leaving the concept of cold fusion behind. Yet, 
The story of cold fusion serves as a potent reminder of the importance of rigorous scientific scrutiny and the pursuit of truth in the face of extraordinary claims. The United States Department of Energy had their say on the matter, and it was not in favor of cold fusion. The year was 1989, and the Department of Energy, or DOE, had just concluded its examination of the reported results of excess heat from cold fusion experiments. Their conclusion? The evidence wasn't convincing enough. The promise of an abundant, cheap source of energy seemed to be slipping away. The DOE decided against allocating funding specifically for cold fusion research, a significant setback for proponents of this technology. Fast forward to 2004. The DOE once again looked at new research on cold fusion. The conclusion, however, remained the same. The evidence still wasn't convincing enough to warrant funding. This second review seemed to confirm the department's initial skepticism. This lack of support from such a critical institution had far-reaching implications. Articles about cold fusion became rarer in peer-reviewed mainstream scientific journals. The absence of these publications meant that the concept of cold fusion did not attract the level of scrutiny typically expected for mainstream scientific research. With fewer eyes on the research, potential breakthroughs were less likely to be identified and errors more likely to go unnoticed. This sequence of events led to a shift in perception. Cold fusion, once hailed as a potential game-changer, was now seen in a different light. It wasn't just skepticism from the scientific community, it was something more profound. Cold fusion was now considered by many to be an example of pathological science. This term, coined by chemist Irving Langmuir, describes a process where scientists become so obsessed with achieving desired results that they begin to perceive their expectations as reality, even in the face of contradicting evidence. Cold fusion had gained a reputation as pathological science. And in this reputation, we see the aftermath of the initial excitement, the dashed hopes and the unfulfilled promises. This is not just a story of cold fusion, but a cautionary tale about the importance of rigorous scientific inquiry and the dangers of unchecked optimism in the field of scientific research. Despite its rocky history, interest in cold fusion has never completely died. This seemingly impossible concept of room temperature nuclear reaction that once captured the world's attention continues to intrigue a dedicated group of researchers even today. The allure of an abundant cheap energy source is hard to resist. And in the face of overwhelming skepticism, a small but determined community of scientists persists in exploring the concept. They operate under alternative designations, such as low energy nuclear reactions or condensed matter nuclear science, but their goal remains the same, to unravel the mystery of cold fusion. One notable example of this enduring interest is a replication attempt funded by none other than the tech giant, Google. In 2019, a team of researchers published their findings in the prestigious journal Nature. However, their efforts to replicate the original fleischmann ponce experiment did not yield the anticipated results. Despite employing state-of-the-art techniques and meticulous methodology, they failed to observe the anomalous heat or nuclear byproducts that had been reported in the original experiment. Yet their work was not in vain. Their rigorous approach and transparent reporting of their findings served to further our understanding of the complexities and challenges inherent in cold fusion research. The legacy of cold fusion is a complex tapestry of scientific intrigue, controversy and perseverance. It's a testament to the relentless human pursuit of knowledge and the audacity to challenge established norms. While its promise of a revolutionary energy source has yet to be realized, the quest for cold fusion has undeniably enriched our scientific landscape. Whether or not cold fusion will ever provide a viable energy source remains uncertain, but its story serves as a reminder of the importance of rigorous scientific scrutiny. So, what can we take away from the saga of cold fusion? The tale of cold fusion, in essence, is a testament to the scientific method and the relentless pursuit of truth it's a story that's as much about human ambition and intrigue as it is about science. The initial discovery by Martin Fleischmann and Stanley Ponce, their claim of producing anomalous heat that could only be explained through nuclear processes, sent shockwaves through the scientific community. The prospect of a bountiful, low-cost energy source was tantalizing. Yet it was this very promise that underscored the importance of rigorous scientific scrutiny. 
When their discovery was put to the test, the scientific method shone through. Attempts to replicate the experiment met with inconsistency and failure. The lack of clear reproducible results, along with the discovery of flaws and sources of experimental error in the original experiment, cast a long shadow of doubt over the claim of cold fusion. The story of cold fusion is not one of defeat, but rather a reminder of the power of critical analysis and peer review in science. It underscores the need for transparency and meticulousness when presenting groundbreaking claims, especially those that could revolutionize our understanding of the world. The story of cold fusion serves as a powerful testament to the scientific method and the pursuit of truth, no matter where it leads us.